If you have a book in you that you've been wanting to get out there, then keep listening to this episode. Or if you're already an author and you want to bring in more income with your book, this is the episode for you. Just putting a book out there isn't what makes sales. It's not what brings in income. And we're going to uncover the exact things that you need to use your book to bring in more business and more income. Welcome to Thriving Launch with Louise Congdon and Kamala Chambers, the show for heart-centered entrepreneurs who want it all. Five days a week, we bring you different segments to inspire you to live a life of freedom. We interview the leading experts in the field of business, health, and love. Be sure to check out Training Tuesdays, where we give you a clear action plan to grow your own business. Maybe you can relate to this. When I was a full-time coach, keep repeating the same things to people over and over and over again. And it got to be kind of draining and I wasn't really enjoying what I was doing anymore. So what I decided to do was record the things that I had to tell clients over and over and over again. And then I packaged those recordings together and sold them as an online course. If you're interested in creating and selling your own online course, head over to thrivinglaunch.com and I have a free training training for you on how to create and make passive income through your own online course. Today's guest is one of the very few people who's had three New York Times bestsellers on the list at one time. He was actually nominated Time Magazine 100 Most Influential List in 2009. On top of that, he has a bachelor's degree from the University of Chicago, a JD from Duke Law School. Today's guest is Tucker Max. He is a genius. When it comes to marketing and understanding book sales and sales in any arena, Tucker is somebody that we should all be listening to. So without further ado, let's bring on Tucker Max. It's so great to have you here, Tucker Max, talking about how to get more media exposure. Thank you for coming on to the Thriving Launch podcast. Are you ready to launch? Let's do it. I know we're both so anxious and eager to learn from you. And what I'd love to hear about is how we can even start to get more media exposure. Right. So you want to talk about overall media exposure or do you want to talk about books specifically? Uh, Because I can go either way if you like. You know, let's let's bring it to to book authors. Let's let's really ground this. And I know all this stuff is really going to apply to everybody. But one of the big misconceptions and why I'm excited to talk about it for book authors is because a lot of people think I'll get my book published. This guy recently approached me and said, I'm going to publish a book and it's going to be big and I'm going to be on Oprah. And I just thought like, like there's, you're going to need a strategy to get to Oprah. Like your book is just the very beginning of your work. Yeah. Um, people, we, we hear that all the time from people, uh, authors come to us and, uh, Basically, what they do is they make a classic mistake, which it sounds like is what your friend is making, is they start with the end in mind. And that actually is really smart with a lot of things. It's the complete wrong way to think about books, right? Um, Because actually, I'll I'll tell you, it's not that you can't start with the end in mind. It's that they start with the wrong end. Uh, The mistake your friend is making is he's thinking about himself, right? Right. What he wants from the book is to get on Oprah, to get attention, right? And like huge amounts of attention. The problem is Oprah doesn't give a crap about him and neither does any reader of the book. No one, this is like the number one reason you must understand, uh, a thing you must understand as a book author, no one cares about you. No one cares about what you want. Everyone cares about themselves, And so the only reason you're going to get them to care about your book is because your book gets them something that they care about. And if you understand that, then you can write a really good book that is really engaging and valuable to a lot of people. And if you do that, then you have a shot at getting on Oprah or launching a company or hitting a bestseller list or whatever it is you want your book to get you. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Like to the more focused you can be and strategical, I I find the better with something like this. So 
yeah, let's let's get into it a little more about what is some of the strategy that you want to look for when getting exposure with your book. I know that focusing on the audience is very important. I want to hear a little bit more about the strategy behind that. All right. So here's how you do this. Uh, it's not just important. It is literally the only thing that matters. And if you do not get it right, nothing else you do will work. And if you get it right, you can almost screw up everything else and still the book's going to help you. My company, Book in a Box, we help authors do this. Uh, and we have a three-part strategy, which basically, before we, before we write one word in the book, we actually figure out the marketing and the marketing uh, uh, angles and the hooks, right? Because that's that's if you don't figure that out at the beginning, you're, you're not going to stumble onto it by accident, right? So here's how we do it. We start the first question we ask the author is why are you writing this book, right? What result does this book have to get you to be successful for you? Now, like your friend who wants to be on Oprah, that would be nice, but it's not like I seriously doubt that he if he if his book doesn't get him on Oprah, the book, everything about the book is a total failure. I mean that that's probably not true. Uh, but the thing to understand, though, is that no one writes a book just to write a book. You write a book because you expect that book will get you something, right? It's going to get you attention, which then you can turn into sales. Or it's going to uh, uh, get clients interested in you so they can join your coaching program. Or it's going to uh, get people interested in their, um, their health uh, and, and eating right, which means people are going to buy you know, some product you have or they're going to use you as their guru, whatever. There's a million things you can get with a book, but you must know first and foremost exactly what those things are, right? Even being on Oprah is not actually what that guy wants. He wants what getting on Oprah will get him, right? And so uh, even if it's just status, credibility, authority, that's totally fine. That's valid, but you must know why you are writing the book because once you know why you're writing the book, then the next question uh, number two you ask yourself is, what audience do I need to reach in order to, to get that why, right? So if you're writing a book, for example, to drive, let's say, clients to your executive coaching business, right? Like, let's say you're a CEO coach. Uh, well, then your audience is very, very clear. It is the, the people who need CEO coaches, right? Those, that's your audience, right? Or if you're writing, a, you know, whatever... Whatever it is you want to get, your audience are the people who can give that to you, all right? The third question then becomes, what do you know that is interesting and valuable to your audience, right? And that becomes the topic of your book. And it, it, the reality is if you don't know anything that's interesting and valuable to people that need CEO coaching, you probably shouldn't be a CEO coach, right? So it actually helps you understand if you should even write that book, if you have that book in you. But once you understand that, then you write the book that's interesting and valuable to the audience you want to reach, which will help you reach them, and that gets you what you want. That three-step process works for any book, anyone trying to get something uh, from, from their book. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense, Tucker, and it really makes me, it makes me want to ask you this other thing because I know a lot of people are thinking they're going to get rich off their books and I've heard a lot of different stories kind of being passed around about books. And you work in this industry more than I do. I, I don't really work in it. And I know a little bit. We've interviewed some experts. But I'm curious, do very many people actually make a no. good amount of money? There we go. You knew I was no. going to ask you this. Well, So he, here's the thing. Very few people make money off of book sales. A lot of people make money when they use books as a marketing tool for something else. Right? Right. So, so like, uh, I mean, I can give you the numbers. I think last year there were about three hundred and fifty to four hundred thousand books published in English. Uh, I think about, man, I think there were about two two thousand that sold a hundred thousand copies. I forget if it was two hundred or two thousand. It might be two hundred, a uh, hundred thousand copies. Right? That that seems like it seems like a lot, but it doesn't seem like a crazy number. There are less at at, at most. There are two thousand copies. Uh, 2,000 books. I think it was 200, to be honest. And then I know that there were under 10 books last year that sold a million copies. Under 10 books that sold a million copies. Uh, now, a million copies is a lot of books, but nonetheless, that that's your odds of, of making millions of dollars from selling copies of books are about like your odds of winning the lottery. But we have, at Book in a Box, we have 300, we've worked with 300 authors and done 300 books. 
And tons of our clients have made, you know, tens, hundreds of thousands and some millions of dollars, not through book sales, but by driving business uh, or clients to the uh, to their business by uh, getting speaking, you know, like doubling their speaking fees or getting more speaking gigs by getting, you know, raising their status and credibility and authority so they could either in some way, shape or form, they turn it into business for their company. Tucker, you're definitely reiterating something that's really important and it's great for thriving launchers and all of you entrepreneurs tuning in that one of the key things, Russell Brunson, our guest in the past, talked about this, the three key funnels. And one of the things that he talked about was a value ladder and having something, having a ladder where people go up to it and they start with something cheap or free and then they move up to something that costs a little bit more and something a little bit more and so on. So you're going up these stairs, but we need that kind of low cost entry point where people can get educated. Ryan Deese talks a lot about this too, the indoctrination and teaching people so that they see the value of what you have to offer. This is what you're getting at is that a book is a great piece of material that then can be used to market that you can go out and and sell and even give away so that people learn about who you are, what you do, they hear your success stories, they see the value in it, and then they hire you. But here's the thing, here's where a lot of book authors, I, and I know a lot of authors who have fallen flat on their face, they took all this time to write this book, but they didn't understand how to market it. So we have the book, we understand the intention, hey, my, I, I want to use this book to land speaking gigs, I want to use this book to attract more clients. Like that, that's very clear to us, but how do I begin to market that? It, Cause getting the word out is the big thing, it, right? It's a great question, but it, it's a fantastic question. And I get this all the time and we kind of get back to, that's why I went through that three-step process is because uh, all the time all, people will come to me with your question. Okay. My book is done. Now, how do I market it? And I'll look at their book and I'll say, it's impossible. And they're like, what do you mean it's impossible? You know, you're, you've marketed all these things. And I'll say, well, the problem is not book marketing. The problem is your book sucks. And you don't have a clear audience that you're going after. And you don't offer any value to any audience I can understand. So there's no way to market it, right? You've already made decisions that in what you thought of as the creative process that were actually marketing decisions that you have limited the ability now to, to market this book down to basically zero, right? So your book marketing actually starts before you write the book. You know, like if you're writing a book about how to lose weight, there's a huge number of people that need to lose weight, right? So, so as long as you write a good book that appeals to some of them, you're probably going to move copies. But if you're writing a book about, um, you know, how to lose weight while, you know, while working on a crab boat in Alaska, you're probably not going to sell any books because there's no one who cares about that. You know, and so that my, that's my entire point. If you've done your job right, then early, before you wrote the book, you identified exactly what you were trying to get. You ex- identified exactly who you were trying to reach, and you identified exactly what you were offering to them that was valuable. Then you put it in a book. Once you do that, and the book's done, all you have to do is now put that book in front of the people that you already identified as your audience. You see, so if my audience are people who want to lose weight, then there's a million ways to get traffic for that, whether it's guest posting or pay, uh, paid ads or YouTube or uh, I mean, there's all the normal marketing strategies work. You just have to put your stuff in front of the people who want it. But the key is to identify super clearly who is my audience and why do they care? That's the key to marketing, because if you can't answer that question, there's no marketing strategy that can overcome that. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And it's incredibly brilliant what you're talking about. When I first got into the online industry and, and sales, one of the things that Kamla coached me on was knowing the audience, finding the audience before I even build the product, making sure I'm connected to that audience and then build the product and sell it back to that audience. So Making sure people yeah. actually want the product <laughs> are interested in it before you actually even create it. And it's very spot on that you're talking about this and I didn't expect it to go this way, but as you talk about it, I'm like, this is this is like brilliant and it's not rocket science, but it's so brilliant because so people, so many people get excited like, yeah, I'm gonna just crush it. I'm gonna spend like three months writing this book and then I'm gonna put five, 10 grand into creating this book and then it's gonna sell, and, but they don't have a clear audience of who it's gonna sell to. 
where they're going to sell it to. Like this is marketing 101 stuff. But when we think about writing a book and marketing a book, it, we get ahead of ourselves. We get so excited. Yeah, because uh, everyone loves the sexy new things. You know, we actually had an author on, on a call the other day ask us what we thought his Snapchat strategy should be. And I started laughing at him. It's like, what are you talking about, dude? Like, uh, like Snapchat is just not in the purview of what you need to even be thinking about. <laughs> if you're thinking about marketing a book, it makes no sense at all. Now listen, if you're Gary Vaynerchuk and you have a massive audience and you like being on Snapchat and you release a book, you can talk about your book on Snapchat, right? But like, he's not Gary Vaynerchuk. And if you don't have a huge audience, you don't go on to Snapchat or whatever to build an audience. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like everyone wants to think about the sexy things, but the fundamentals may not be fun, but they are 80 to 90% of people, if you just focus on the fundamentals, you're going to get a huge amount of results and a huge amount of success. Absolutely. So let's say we, we've covered the basics of what you're talking about and they're really the most essential stuff, right? the basics of everything are the most important as an athlete. I know that the basics for me, you know, are having endurance and strength. If I don't have that, there's no sense of competing as an entrepreneur. I know that I need to understand my market. I need to understand how to, where they are, how to find them and then how to talk to them and get in their heads and, and have that conversation with them and, and no product should be made. Let's say we've got all of that in mind. I've got my book. I know who I'm going to market it to. Do you have any kind of savvy suggestions of how to get out there and start marketing it to the right audience? All right. So yeah, yes, uh, let's assume exactly what you said, clear audience, clear value proposition. What do I do now? So uh, I think the, the, the answer depends on what your book is and what you are trying to do with the book though. For example, if your book is kind of the entry point to selling a video course or some coaching method or things like that, I think Facebook ads are fantastic. If you have a pretty decent funnel, uh, using uh, we see a lot of authors will do like a, like a 10 page PDF uh, they'll give away for free that's almost like a summary of the book or the, the best parts in the book. And then that will upsell the book and then the book upsells the course or the coaching or the community or whatever it is you're doing. Um, for a lot of different categories, Facebook ads work incredibly well. And I am not the expert on those Facebook funnels. Uh, I'm sure you guys have probably interviewed those people. Um, that works really well. The other thing that I think works really, that's for broad categories where there's clear demand and you're just trying to carve out a piece of that demand. What we see a lot of our authors do and what we coach them to do or what we uh, you know, advise them to do is to actually go the opposite way and go super niche. If you're a professional and you have a lot of sort of very specific knowledge, that knowledge is probably valuable, very valuable to a small group of people. And so what we tell them to do is actually target those people directly. So for example, one of our first clients um, – she was an expert in pop-up retail, which is a small subset of the retail industry. And like, there's no way she's ever going to interest me or you in her book. So she didn't try. Instead, she made her book deeply about pop-up retail. And there's honestly probably 5,000 people on, on earth who care about pop-up retail enough to buy a book about it. But those 5,000 people really care a lot and they are really into it. And, and a lot of them are uh, decision makers in retail and could hire her to be a consultant, which is what she is. And so she focused essentially on uh, small niche media that spoke to influ influencers in retail. Like every media outlet just about she got was something you or I would never read in a million years. It had very small coverages, um, but they're all about retail. Right, and she got. She ended up getting a. T she only sold a thousand copies of her book, and has probably made close to a million dollars in consulting and uh, uh, fees and contracts already, uh, selling a thousand books. And that really reminds me of our interview with Andre Chaperone 
and what he did with an email list of a thousand people and being super specific. I just want to reiterate the genius that Tucker is is sharing here with the our community here at Thriving Launch. He is sharing a lot of wisdom because a lot of us think we need to just blanket the whole community. We need to be Walmart. I'm going to serve anyone and any and everyone who needs to lose weight. But being niche can actually be a, a extremely helpful and can help us find those hyper buyers or those people that are really going to resonate with us and our message and are going to want to buy and be completely absorbed in our products and services. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tucker. I just, I, I got excited there for a moment about that. No, I mean, it, it's great. Like what you're saying is exactly right. Almost everybody given the option will buy the thing that they think is designed for them over the thing that's designed for a broad audience. So one of my favorite examples is like uh, a friend of mine, this is, he was not a client, but he had an SEO business and it, it was doing pretty good. I mean, it was fine. But he was really trying to figure out how to like distinguish himself. And I wish I could take credit for it, but it was another friend of ours who said, dude, aren't half of your clients dentists? Or he had like three or four dentist clients uh, because one of them came on and then referred his friends. And he's like, yeah. He goes, well, all right, why don't you just roll out like a different landing page called SEO for dentists and make it all geared to dentists? There's probably no competition for those Google keywords. Just go do that. And he's like, that's stupid. Who gives a shit about SEO for dentists? <laughs> and the guy's like, what about all the dentists? Who dentists do. do. <laughs> and so he did that and he 10 x his business. He actually ended up jettisoning, jettisoning or selling off or stop, closing down his broad SEO business. And he became the SEO for dentists guy. And now I think he actually even subdivided more to like orthodontics and all these weird subdivisions, right? And he has like 20 front-facing businesses. They're all deeply niche businesses doing SEO for basically people who mess with other people's mouths. And, and he's crushing it. He's doing incredible because he went the opposite of what most people think. I'd love to just switch gears a little bit because I absolutely love everything you're talking about, about niching down and how important this is. Now, what if we've done that? What if we have our niche and we're, we're really focused? I'd love to just hear a little bit about getting media exposure. Okay. So um, it, let's go back to the fundamentals, like we said earlier. Media exposure is always about getting relevant information in front of a relevant audience. Okay. So um, what, again, once you know what your, who your audience is and you know why they care – from that point forward, it's just a matter of understanding where your audience is. That's it. That's all you have to think about. So like for SEO for dentists, all you had to do was buy you know, keywords like search, search terms, right? I, I think he actually, if I remember correctly, he got – there's some dental publication that, of course, only dentists read. And he got – somehow he got profiled in that. He got profiled in it very sim – they would never do a story on SEO. They'll do a story on SEO about dentists because their audience are dentists, right? So here, here's the key. When you are pitching media, understand, again, the journalist doesn't care about you. They care about themselves. And what they want is they want page views. They want people to read their articles. That's all they care about. That's how they get judged. How well did their articles do? So if you can go to them and say, I have X uh, information or story, whatever, and you can show them why it would be really relevant to their audience, then they're going to run that. You're doing them a favor, right? Getting media is easy once you understand that journalists and media need attention. And if you can get them, give them stories that get them attention, not only will they run them, they'll come back to you for more. Does that make sense? You're giving them something that they want and need. But the problem comes because people are like, oh, I want to be on Oprah. And it's like, it's the SEO for dentists guy. Oprah doesn't care. She's never in a million years going to ever have anyone doing SEO or SEO for dentists on her show. <laughs> so because tell me, you've been doing an amazing job with SEO. What's right. it like to log into your computer? <laughs> I mean, but that's the point though. So You laugh at that example, but then all day long I see people – who have stories that no one cares about or, no, or, the, or the audience they're pitching don't care about, but they keep pitching them because they're thinking about themselves and they're not thinking about 
what are the needs of the, the people I'm pitching and their audiences? If you frame it that way, it's, it's just, it's easy. You know, it's, it's really spot on in the course that, that I've created that teaches people how to get on podcasts and how to pitch media outlets to interview them and feature them. One of the things that I talk about is answering what's in it for them. What's in it for the person interviewing you? What's in it for the person featuring you? And what is that going to do for them if they feature you for their audience? Is that going to make their audience like them? Is that going to provide value for the audience? So you can't be a relationship expert and trying to pitch a, a business show without somehow connecting and saying, hey, I noticed that you don't have a relationship expert, but did you know that there's studies that show that happiness in a relationship affects your work? And this is something that'd be really unique. And also, did you know that in my last interview, we did you know 10,000 hits in one day. Uh, I noticed that you're doing three or four, so we could even help bring a new audience to you. And then the person is gonna go, okay, new audience, more hits in the past, this person's popular, yes, let's bring them on. So we, we, we need to be that focused. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly it. That's, but it, I, we, we hit this and like, I, I, I say this all the time to people. If you just focus on the fundamentals that everything is really easy and no one wants to focus on that fundamental, like, no, no, no I just want to be uh, famous. No, no, no. I just want to be in the New York times. And it's like, well, dude, if the New York times doesn't care what you're writing about, how are you going to do it? Then they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that sort of stuff. They just want their attention or they want their fame or their money super fast. And that's just not how it works, man. Those of us who put our head down and work on the fundamentals get the results. This has been so fantastic to have you on the show talking about how to get your book out there in a bigger way and how to create a book that people will actually buy and funnel your business to a bigger level. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Tucker, and educating us all, we're going to make sure to include all the links and resources to you and your book in a box and all of that uh, at thrivinglaunch.com. As always, folks, remember that you can get all the resources there, not to miss anything that Tucker has to offer. Awesome. Definitely. Thanks for having me, guys. You've been listening to the Thriving Launch Podcast. For books and resources related to today's episode, make sure to head over to thrivinglaunch.com. We'll see you there. Hey, and check out the next episode where we're going to talk with Catherine Alice about how to attract your soulmate your soulmate in love, and your soulmate in business. So see you there. And if you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a rating. It all helps. We appreciate you. Thank you so much.